Is generative AI going to take away all the work from illustrators and artists? Oh dear. I had a plaintive comment on my video called What is an Artist last week? <laughs> Let me read it to you. My personal struggle is with how good AI art generators are getting and this is almost destroying my motivation to try and become a professional illustrator. Of course I won't stop creating but it gets depressing some days, especially because of how many people are super happy to replace artists with machines that do all or most of the work. And how many pseudo artists are exploiting the current phase of deregulation to use copyrighted material. The original artist didn't consent to being put in the database. I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. If that's something you are familiar with, I'm willing to talk about. Thanks. Well, I'm a little bit of a geek myself and I listen to lots of podcasts about tech like Hard Fork and University Day, stuff like that. And so I'm aware of uh, generative AI coming along, uh, but I haven't actually bothered looking at it. And so this comment made me think maybe I should. So I went to have a look at Dull.e, Dull E, some people call it Dolly, to see what it could do. And I was disappointed, actually. Uh, I was expecting something a bit more exciting. Let me show you some of the things I found and talk through them. OK, let's have a look at this. This is from the Dolly homepage. And they're showing you here text prompt, a snail made of a harp, a snail with a texture of a harp. And you know why would you want to do that? Well, I know somebody probably would. And but when you actually start looking at these images, some of them are quite interesting. I quite like that. You know, yeah, it's an inspiration, isn't it? It's a starting point that could sort of turn into a trophy, you know, for an award or something like that with the the harp. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a snail. It could be something else. Um, and this, I think, looks like. Um, you, you know, sort of sugar, doesn't it? You know, one of those things you make out of sugar, you know, fancy chefs make. This one here is a little bit weird and <laughs> kind of gives you a, you know, if you put a couple of eyes in there, you know, if you put a couple of eyes in there, you know, you've you got the start of some kind of a character there. Let's get something here. So, you know, I quite liked, I quite like that one. It's just kind of a nice shape and that's quite nice as well. It kind of looks like a. it's made out of a, an old bent nail or something, but it's not a sl snail really, but it, it's, a, it's a shape. It's an inspiration. It's a starting point. And uh, the others, I don't think, quite really do anything to me, um, it, you know, in terms of a character. But, but if you wanted to do a carving or something, that's quite interesting. You know, that's a starting point for jewellery or something. So uh, it's a starting point. I don't think it's an end. I don't think there's anything there you might really want to use as an image on your website or something. But then again, you know, if you're getting a free image on your website, yeah, most people, who cares? They weren't going to pay you for it in the first place. Uh, here's another one, snail made of a loaf of bread. Oh, I, yeah, I've kind of... <laughs> I really like that one there. It's kind of a bun and a Danish pastry kind of rolled together. It's just there's something there. I don't know what, but it's probably gone into my head and maybe one day it will sort of pop out. I think that's quite funny. <laughs> and again, it's you know, it's got a cute little tilt to its head and that's something which it's, it's not the bread, it's not the snail. It's it's the angle, it's the some, it's the ness of it that I kind of like. Um, and again, I think down here, you've got that kind of Danish pastry idea or this kind of swirly kind of croissant -y kind of look, which is a really nice idea. And I may have thought about it, but I may not have thought about it. This has got me to that point of thinking about it a lot quicker than doing it on my own. Now here, this is where I think it starts to get a bit complicated because these are pretty little illustrations. What does it say? An illustration of a baby fox in a tutu walking a dog. So so these are things, you know, Dali have come up with as examples. And, you know, I think a lot of people would be quite happy with some of these on their website. You know, that's, that's a cute little illustration there. Um, 
That would be if you got the whole of it. You know, that's quite cute. I think people would maybe kind of use these. Some, But some of them just look a bit weird, don't they? I mean, what is going on with that one? I really don't know. And, and that's quite cute, I think, if you've got the whole illustration. So uh, it starts getting tricky. When we get into these kind of simple images, I think it does a lot better. And here again, an illustration of a bunny in a beanie skating on ice. And some of these are quite pretty, but they're very generic. Um, and you could you know, order something up like this for somebody to draw it for you on Fiverr quite easily. Um, let's zoom in on that one. I think that one's, that one's really cute. You'd be quite happy to use that on your website. Um, I would feel nervous that it's not an AI generated thing and that it is actually, it's just gone and copied something. I like that one because it's got an attitude to it. Um, it kind of looks a bit weird. The ears are kind of weird. And the ears are so weird that they might make me think, maybe I could try drawing ears like that on a character and see what happens. And again, it's a starting point. Um, that's, you see there, it's it's almost there, but there's no face, there's no real, um, you know, expression. That's got something about it. But none of them are, quite finished are they this is asking for a professional uh, this is professional right okay high quality illustration of a chicken t turtle chimera a chicken imitating a turtle a chicken made of a turtle so obviously you give it lots of different kind of um st starting prompts and these are just horrible aren't they <laughs> You would never, you, well, I don't know, you might use it on your website for your blog or something, you know, just to put some picture on there, you know, but it, 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 it's not professional, is it? It's just not professional. And I looked at these and immediately thought, well, I could do that. And I did. Here, let me show you. <laughs> okay, so a chicken in a turtle's shell. Um, let's uh, first of all draw a chicken. Uh, something like that. We can have there, and that's going to be coming out of a turtle shell like that, um, which is going to have to have um, little side openings for the for the uh, wings. I was going to call them the arms because uh, that gets a bit confusing. Um, the oh no, no, underneath we want to have it kind of lined like that, don't we? And then. It'll be going like that on the back. And then we want to have sort of chicken claws on the bottom and a little bit of a, a tail <laughs> there. And we go ta da oh. So that just kind of gets me a little bit more excited immediately. And then I start thinking, well, wait a minute, you know, that could be a jumper or something like that. And, you know, maybe it's a, it's a Christmas jumper, uh, <laughs> sweater, whatever you call it. And, uh, and then suddenly we got the beginnings of a story of a chicken wearing a Christmas sweater and it's Christmas time. And who knows where the story's going to go from there. While I'm getting up the next screen, here's a message. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos to help you improve your creative skills. Okay, this is now a professional high quality emoji of a love struck cup of boba. I don't know what boba is. Anyway, so uh, you could use any of these, couldn't you? You know, it's an emoji. It knows what an emoji is. It knows what the basic thing is. And you could just use all of them and they're generic and they're not terribly exciting. I don't know what Boba is, so I don't know what we're trying to achieve. See, that's slick. Uh, that is slick. Um, that kind of looks like, a, you know, a 14 year olds uh, and again that's almost there but there's something it's just not quite got there here we have a professional high quality emoji of a love struck cocker too let's zoom in uh, yeah I, th I think you could use not that one <laughs> maybe not that one 
uh, love struck. You see, they it's just sort of here. Look, that isn't particularly love struck, is it? But they put some hearts there just to <laughs> let you know what's going on. Mm, no, no. <laughs> That's quite cute, that one there. And you know, these others, it kind of sort of gets worse, doesn't it, as you go down the page. And what on earth is going there? Uh, it's seen illustrations of sort of crazy love-struck characters going, ah! <laughs> and he's trying to do that. What's going on with his beak? But you see, at the same time, you might see that beak and think, mm, it's actually adding something to the expression. I could maybe start from there and see what I could do with it. Now these are illustrations that I have asked it to draw. So these are things that uh, I, I've signed up and I wanted to see what it would do. So I've said a black and white ink cartoon drawing of a cat trying to catch a bat. Yeah, yeah. What is this person doing here? <laughs> we don't need a person. I didn't ask for that. Uh, and a couple of them you've got Look, here we got two cats. Uh, and I don't know what that one's doing there, so I didn't ask for two cats. Um, and But apart from that, I think you could probably quite happily use those on a website. But at the same time, I think they, to me, they look like they've been drawn by a 14-year-old and not a professional, it's the doodles. <laughs> Move on to the next one. So I thought, let's try and do a really classic kind of thing, a watercolour children's book illustration of a phlox glove fairy and a magic toadstool in a forest. Well, they instantly kind of, well, when you look down like that, your first impression, hey, that looks nice. Um, <laughs> And essentially, I didn't ask for this person here, essentially they are representations of Victorian fairy kind of illustrations. I'm going to say, you know, you wouldn't <laughs> use these in a book today, but you might actually, because you see this kind of thing on self-published material on Kindle. Publishers who need to make a profit and sell books would not commission <laughs> a story with toadstools and pretty little fairies like this these days i don't think it just looks too classic you would need to come up with something far more interesting you have to have some some something new added to it uh they kind of look quite pretty they've <sighs> but you know what what is going on here I have no idea. It doesn't know how to draw a face. It doesn't, you know, uh, what is this arm? Um, <laughs> you know, this, and this one here, it, again, it looks like it's been sort of painted by a, a, a school student copying a classic Victorian illustration. Now here I asked for a cartoon sketch of a dog dressed as James Bond holding a gun with a nonchalant expression. If you were doing a blog and you wanted a picture of a, something like that it would do and no one would really notice and uh, that would be quite fun. I don't know why he's holding a pipe. I think it's meant to be a gun. <laughs> he's obviously a smoker. Uh, what that is, I really don't want to know. Um, and there's something dripping there. I have no idea what that's about. But it's not James Bond, is it? If I was drawing James Bond, he would have a bow tie and a dinner jacket. This is a private detective. It's not James Bond. James Bond would never wear a hat like that. <laughs> and they've all got this kind of expression. That there's a body language there and a body... Well, all the body language is just not James Bond because he's just cool. Whereas this is more kind of, you know, creepy and sinister and hiding in dark shadows. And it, it, it's not James Bond. I'm sorry, and certainly not a nonchalant expression. <laughs> uh, so a cartoon sketch of a dog dressed as James Bond holding a gun and with a happy smile. <laughs> so this is completely gone. I, that's a water pistol. I don't know what he's got there. He's shooting with his fingers and he's trying to unfold an underground tube <laughs> kind of subway map or something there. What is happening here? I've no idea. Look, he's got 
eyes and things or no i have no idea it's got nothing to do with james bond that is a salacious smile <laughs> so this is a smile and it's thought happy yeah let's give a thumbs up and that will uh, and, oh and again here look thumbs up so it's got a thing you know ha smile and a thumbs up that's happy uh it, because it's analyzed thousands of selfies probably you could use that but the person who's going to use that is never ever ever going to employ an illustrator and then finally i put draw a cat in the style of shoe rainer it obviously doesn't know me they haven't put my my oeuvre into their database those are four entirely different styles so if you're asking it to draw it in the style of you would expect a similar kind of style to come up and none of those are anything like me um and they are cats that have been you know the, essentially that's a photograph of a cat and it's done something to it same here i think same there and and they're kind of you remember those painting with numbers things i don't know if you still get painting with numbers but these these are kind of painting with numbers this is the kind of thing you do in photoshop or procreate where you stick a picture of your cat up and then you put a layer over the top and you start drawing over the top and and how comes something that kind of looks like your cat but is is a fairly bland kind of drawing and this is you could use it. you could just put that you know you could do a little you know oops or something like that on uh, and add a bit of text on there and a speech bubble uh, on photoshop or something and use it on your website you could do but the person who's going to do that is not going to employ an illustrator so i lost interest at that point uh, i might come back in a year's time and see if it has improved just to keep uh, seeing what's going on uh, I might also, if I suddenly one day thought, God, I really have no idea what to do here on a boring Monday morning. How am I going to get started on this idea? I might just pop along, type in a few words and see what comes up to get a starting point. A, a little bit of grit in the oyster <laughs> to to start developing something new. So what do I think? Well, can you see behind me all those books? Uh, a lot of those are reference books, which I haven't looked at in years. And basically, they're there to look pretty behind me in this video. Once upon a time, before Google, I had all my reference books. And uh, every time I went to a jumble sale or something, a thrift shop, I would have a look in the, the library there. and Oh, look, a book about ants, you know, <laughs> really cheap. So I'd buy that and uh, add it to my list as uh, reference material. I have several big animal books I would just naturally go to to, to sort of get the, the feeling of the animal. But now I go to Google Images and uh, the first thing if I want to know about an animal, I dial up, say, cat skeleton and start from there. And I kind of work out how the skeleton works and how the bones work so that I can sort of get the feel of the inside of the cat and then start looking at sort of images of different cats to sort of see, you know, some have short tails, some have long ears and some have <laughs> big whiskers uh, and sort of, sort of build up a thing from all these images. I don't just go in and copy an image. So in a way, I'm kind of doing what AI is doing anyway. It's kind of sort of ha having a great look at a database of stuff and sort of congealing it into something different. But what, but it's different for me because I'm adding my own kind of style and just an individual. It's just the way I held the pen, the kind of pen I use, the paper I use, just makes it look different. AI can't quite do that. They're, they're kind of analyzing various different styles and um, trying to put them together. But when I've sort of requested things, it's come up with what I would feel is kind of kind of 14 year old stuff. Uh, you know, it's not terribly sophisticated yet. Will it get better? Uh, it can only get better and it, it will get more and more convincing. But I, I think at the moment, I think it's actually quite interesting to, as a starting point. Um, if, you're try, if you're thinking of an idea, you can put in these kind of key words that you're thinking about, put them in there and go, oh, <laughs> that's interesting. 
and use that as a, a, the starting point as you would if you went to Google Images and sort of typed in those keywords to see what came up and as, as a starting point to start building your original vision. It's very, very rare that an artist has a truly original vision and it probably just happens sort of one day <laughs> on a Thursday afternoon in their life when pow, something happens to them and uh, they do something that is radically new and then everybody basically copies them and sort of develops that idea until the next <laughs> 50 years time, I don't know, 20 years time, something, the next artist goes, oh, Wednesday afternoon, I've just had a really good idea. And, and that's how sort of art grows. But basically, it's, everything is a mishmash, which is kind of what AI is doing. And if you want to be an illustrator and an artist, then you have to just keep working at it. You can use AI as a starting point, as an inspiration, uh, just to give you ideas, just to kind of give you those little kind of left field things. Like I really like that sort of mix of the harp and the slug. There was just something about it which made me think, oh, I would never have thought of that shape. But it's a starting point. And I would then sort of go on and sort of sketch and sketch and sketch and just see where it led me. And by doing that, you are adding your individual view and I think in the end that is what is going to make the difference at the moment I think AI is really good at coming up with kind of anime or this kind of mechanical kind of stuff the kind of stuff that you're kind of probably doing on iPads it's really good at that because it's mechanical if you're drawing on an iPad you know you're drawing really clean lines it can analyze that really nicely. Whereas if you're drawing with pen pencil, it's just so much more subtle and it's harder for it to really analyze what's going on there because it's more human and it's going to find that harder. And as time goes on, you know, the NFT thing is just rubbish. It's not going to happen really. What people will want is an individual piece of paper with a hand-drawn piece of artwork on it with a um, beautifully illustrated or it doesn't have to actually you know it doesn't have to be you know intensely beautifully illustrated it's just it's just a vision it's just a, a humanity on a piece of paper that is what people will prize as time goes on and when it comes to websites thinking oh I need a picture of uh, I heard somebody talk about a, a you know a, a Facebook logo in a thunderstorm Whew, you can do that in no time and get it for free uh, and they're going to do it, but they were never, ever, ever going to commission you to do that. So there's going to be a lot of this stuff. And I think human artwork will stand out because it will be original because it's done by a human. Thanks for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Render Drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week. In the meantime, <laughs> keep drawing, 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 keeping away from all that AI stuff. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye.